three minutes until LFA starts. two minutes until LFA starts. One minute until LFA starts.
you happy and glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Now, I just want to, I just want to, I, I want this to carry on in, in, all the way through worship, all the way through the service this morning. And this morning I got up and sat around the table and was enjoying a cup of coffee. And I just was reading a passage of scripture I want to share with you. I, I hope it, I hope it pulls your heart towards the Lord this morning as it did mine. Isaiah. It says, for the Lord is God. What else is there? For the Lord is God. And he has created the heavens and the earth and put everything in the place. He made the world to be lived in, not to be a place of empty chaos. At this time in our, in our world, it seems like everything is chaos. Amen. The election, everything else going on, but God's in control. Amen. I am the Lord, he says, and there is no other. I publicly proclaim bold promises. I do not whisper obscurities in some dark corner so no one can understand what I mean. And I did not tell the people of Israel to ask me for something I did not plan to give them. I, the Lord, speak only what is true and right. I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you and I will care for you. I will carry you along and I will save you. Father God, we come before you as a call to worship. It's a time to lift our hearts and to lift our, our hands and to lift our voices to you, God. You may be in this place this morning. You may not know God. You just may be here because someone invited you. You may be here because you saw the building and thought it was an awesome place to be. And just whatever reason you're here this morning, I just pray right now for the remainder of this service that you would open your heart and your mind to God. Father, we seek your face in this place. Father, we want to. We want what you have for us. So we lift you up, God, and we just pray your Holy Spirit would move among us. In Jesus' name. Let's not stop now, yes. with 
Come on, church. Let's go after it right now. Come on. Let's make this personal now. Come on. Lord, we love you. Come on, church. Lord, we love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. God, we stand in awe of you here today, God. Where would we be? Where would we be, Lord? What an appropriate passage of scripture here today, Lord. In the midst of chaos and anxiety, worry. Lord, in the midst of all the cloud of of uncertainty, Lord God, you are there. In fact, nothing shines brighter, God, than you. Even brighter than the sun, Lord, even here today in this place, God, you shine your light. Lord, we just want to be a people that is desperate for you, Lord. That's my prayer, God, if if I can speak for all of us, Lord. That's our prayer here today, God, is we want to be a people that is desperate for you, God. Lord, we, we can't seek selfish desires or, or things that might benefit us, Lord. And I, and I know with everything going on, God, there's a, a lot that's demanded of us, Lord. But I know in the midst of all that, in the, in the face of all that, there you stand and our attention is on you, God. In our worship here, Lord God, it is all to you and for you. We glorify you here today, God. What an honor and a privilege it is to stand here today, God, to be in your presence, Lord God. The fact that we just took our, another breath just now that you gave us, God, we're so thankful for, God. Lord, we worship you right now, God. We worship you. We worship you. Church, as you might know, it once a month we consider it a privilege and an honor to be able to remember the sacrifice that Christ paid so that we can have freedom. Amen, church. We're going to gather around this table here today and we call communion. And some of you might be very familiar with this ordinance of our church. Maybe some of you are new to this experience. In fact, we talked to the staff just this week that I'll never forget my first time uh, for me to participate in communion and and how how awesome that was. I'll I'll never forget that experience. And I guess that's why I'm very proactive and we are very proactive to never let this be a habit. Amen, church. I never want to come in and say, well, it's it's the first of the week. It's communion time. You know what, guys? If, If that's the case, I don't want to do it anymore. I want to be able to come into God's house and say, man, we get to celebrate around the table and remember God, remember the sacrifice that he, st- that he made back then, but even remember that even today. And it ha- it, that sacrifice still happens every day, amen, church? It's a life-giving blood that flows through us every day. We just get the chance to celebrate around this table today, and that's what we get to do as part of our worship experience. This is why we make it part of our worship experience because that's what we get to do is worship Christ, to worship our Lord within the realms of this table, around the realms of communion. And so we practice open communion here. We don't, we don't believe you have to be a member of this church to practice communion here. All we ask is that you search your heart and, and it's, it's more of a spiritual thing. Where are you with Christ? And you know what? We can take care of that right now. We can we're going to have a little time of prayer. I'm going to have the ushers at Colony Point, if you guys go and take your places and get ready to serve our church here. But right now, guys, you know, the only requirement is, is search your heart. Where are you with God? And this is our chance to clear all distractions, to clear all the mess and all the storms and everything that life demands and say, God, I, I, here I am. I want a clean slate, a clear heart. Here I am to receive you here today. So can I invite you right now? With, can we just all pray right now? Let's just search our heart and say, God, here I am. God, here I am. Take this heart of mine right now before I approach your, your table here of, of, and your cup of celebration, Lord God, around this communion table. God, search my heart. Search my heart and make it clean. Search my heart and make it pure. God, I give you my life right now. As I celebrate you here today, Jesus, we thank you. We thank you. Church, can we just stay in this attitude of worship as you come around this table? Our ushers are going to give you some instructions. They're going to help you out as far as where to go. So if you're new with our experience here today, 
uh, they'll, they'll tell you where to go. So go ahead and I should be hands. Go ahead and instruct them where to go. And like I say, just follow the person there right in front of you. And it's quite simple. So you'll be, guys will be able to join us here this morning.
make sure everyone's been served. If you've not been served, if you'd be bold enough, just or at least raise your hand so we can get someone to you. Has anybody not been served? We'll make sure everybody has gotten a chance to be served with any praise you, Lord. Church, in this experience this morning, can, can I just paint a picture for you as far as what I envision this experience around this table today? And, and those of you who have children, a child at one time, so I guess it covers everybody here. But I, I like the illustration of, I, I know when I was a, a little Edgar, um, and how I just, I, I'd love to be around my, my dad, even though I'd really, there's things I, I didn't connect with him, and I wish I didn't catch everything from him, or I, just, I, would, I would know how to use a tool. Um, I didn't catch everything, obviously, but I didn't, you know, that wasn't our connection. My connection is I know that he loved me. And when I, when I, I still remember this illustration, I see my kids do it now. I just, um, just to reach up and, and I wanted to be held. I just kind of, you know, I did this number right here, you know, and I knew my dad would, would pick me up and, and just, just hold me. And, um, I love that illustration. You know, my son woke up with me again this morning and says, dad, make sure you wake me up on the way to church, which is around six. And I, my, my, my son followed me everywhere I went around this church this morning as I prayed. And it was the most beautiful illustration, and that's what I pictured today. I pictured us around this table, and this is our chance. This is our opportunity to lift our hands up to God and say, Abba, Father, which translates, Daddy, Daddy, would you hold me today? I don't know what you came in here with. I know some of us have issues. We have storms. We have trials. We have struggles. If you live life, then life happens. And it's our opportunity around this table as we celebrate to say, Daddy, Daddy, I worship you. Will you hold me today? I want, you to, I want that illustration to be vivid in your mind here today. As we take these emblems and realize the sacrifice that was truly paid for us. When we say, Daddy, Daddy, I'm telling you, there's no hesitation. And sometimes in our humanness, I hesitate. I'm, I'm human. It seems like when I holler out daddy daddy to my heavenly father he's there in an instant there's no hesitation there can, can i pour that into you here today church as we celebrate around this table today there's no hesitation when it comes to christ loving you here today none i want you to remember that amen church you guys with me on that he loves us that much and that's the love we're celebrating around this table is, God, you love us this much, this much, and you didn't even blink an eye, you did not even hesitate to pay the ultimate price so that I can be loved. Remember that. Amen, church. Can we, can we just close our eyes right now, and as we hold these emblems in our hand, let's, you hold the bread, it represents Christ's body, bruised and broken so that we can have life here today. Without hesitation, this body was bruised and broken and beaten and torn so that we can have life, so that he can hold us and love us. I want to pray over this here today. God in heaven, thank you. Thank you, God, that you love us that much, that you were willing to part with the most precious gift, the most precious thing you ever had, and that was your son, Jesus so that we can have life. I thank you for that, God. I never take that lightly. And I'm actually overwhelmed by that thought here today. Thank you, Jesus, for this sacrifice in your precious name. Amen. Let's take the body together. As you hold the cup in your hands, it's a representation of the blood that was spilled out when he was crucified on the cross, that tree. And this blood covers our sins. I'm so thankful for that. And it, it's a, it's a, it still flows. This, this blood this, that covers sins never stopped flowing. Even today, if we came in this place, as I mentioned, with struggles with sin, you know what, this blood, this emblem that this 
represents, it covers us today. Amen, church. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you. Jesus, thank you for your blood. Thank you for the sacrifice. Thank you that your life-giving blood still flows today, Jesus. Thank you. As we take this together here today, Jesus, I pray you bless it. May we never forget. And today, let us be reminded again. Daddy, Daddy, love us here today. In name we pray, amen. Let's take the cup together. Now, church, with an attitude of worship right now, if you're able to put your cups down, let's, let's worship right now. Our worship team is going to come back up and lead us in a, in a few more moments of worship. But can we engage Christ right now with everything within us? Can I challenge you right now to go all in? You're not promised tomorrow. In fact, we're not promised the next breath you're about to take. So in, in that challenge, can we just go all in in our worship right now? And let's just say, Christ, here I am. Take my inconsistencies. Take this. Take this dirty person that I am that's got issues, it's messy, that is just, Lord, just take me right now. I offer it up to you as a living sacrifice. So church, can we do that right now in words? Come on, let's go after God right now with all of the us.
life your cause My will lay aside from your cause And reserved all the depths of my heart Only for you And I'm caught in the rhythms of grace they overcome all my ways Realize me step every day To pray for your glory And there's nothing inside you, God No, no, no There's nothing There's 
And God, as we declare there's none beside you, we also declare that true for our own hearts, our own lives today. God, that anything that we've placed there, that we've put before you in our lives, God, we set that aside. And we say, God, there's none beside you in our heart. There's none beside you in our, our life, God. It's all for you. It's all about you. God, that our lives would truly shine your light and the light of your cause to this world in desperate need of your love and of your glory. It's in Jesus' name. If that's your prayer, can you just say amen? Amen. Man, what an awesome morning to gather together to declare the greatness of our God. Well, you can be seated today, and we just want to say thank you for being here. Thank you for worshiping with us today at Longview First Assembly. Especially if you're here and it's your first time here and you're our guest this morning. Man, what an honor to have you today. And we're just so thrilled that you're here. And we're just going to ask if you would, if you're here as our guest. In fact, we ask everybody to do this every single week. If you'd reach into that seat pocket in front of you and grab that care and communication card. It's that green card right there and begin to fill that out. And the, the reason we ask you to do that, especially if you're our guest, is we want to be able to um, let you know, man, what we have available for you and for your family. And as you're our guest this morning, we want to be able to uh, best serve you and uh, in your household today. So if you'd fill that out, and if there's any questions you have about the church uh, or about how you can get plugged in, just write that down on there. Check one of those boxes there, and uh, we'll get in touch with you. Uh, this week on that. So thank you so much for doing that. Thank you again for being our guest this morning. As you're filling that out, let me remind everyone that we have our small groups today or this week. And so this is a small group week and uh, you want to make sure that you're there for yours, getting connected in discussions around the messages that pastors bring in on Sunday morning. And I love being able to sit and hear what, what God's speaking to us through our pastor, but how much more to be able to sit then in a circle with some others and say, man, this is what God's speaking to me, or this is what I'm hearing from God. And you're able to discuss it and have some accountability and have some further dialogue on what God's doing in your life. And it just helps with that application and, and carrying it forward. So make sure you're a part of your small group as they meet this week. We are celebrating today. Uh, well, we're just celebrating communion and we're celebrating our relationship with God, but we're also celebrating I mean, what God did uh, this past Wednesday night. We had our neighborhood block parties at four different locations uh, around our city, just opening up front yards uh, to the neighbors that are coming through. We had the honor and privilege of hosting one at our house, and it was just amazing to be able to connect with our neighbors. And, and I'm telling everybody, I'm like, man, I so wish we had more days like this, you know, that there were more national holidays that got everybody out of their house so that we could meet and, and get to know each other. And we were able to love on so many families in our neighborhood and in the other neighborhoods that, that opened up their homes. And it was just a great night of connecting with people in our community, of loving people in our community and inviting them to come to uh, LFA and to find a place where they can get connected in relationship with God. And so we just are celebrating that today. And as I talked to the other homes that opened up their homes, and we started out with more hot dogs than anybody wanted to see. You know, you ever get to that point where it's so much food, you're like, ugh, ugh, I don't even want. But by the end of the night, we're all out of hot dogs, all the candies gone, and, and just countless people going, man, thank you for doing this. Man, this is great. Man, how awesome is this? And so, and what an awesome event Neighborhood Block Parties was. And uh, before we take up the offering, we just want to show you a quick video that kind of captures uh, what happened this past Wednesday night.
think it's on repeat. Did, yeah, clap, come on. It was, it was a great, great outreach, and, and man, that, that almost does it justice, those pictures, when you just had to experience and be there, and so, man, thank you for all of you who volunteered, who put on a blue shirt, and who worked to make that such a big success, and uh, man, we're just kind of beaming about that night. It was, a, it was a great, great night. So our ushers are coming now to wait on us for our morning tithe and offering. And so if you would, would you bow your hearts and your heads with me? And uh, let's go to the Lord one more time for this offering. God, thank you for allowing us the opportunity to be your ambassadors to this community and to this world. God, thank you for an opportunity to put on a blue shirt and just love our neighbor. And God, I just ask that there would be continued fruit from our efforts Wednesday night, God, that you would bless, God, us as in our efforts that, um, God, as we went out to reach our community and our neighbors. And Lord, as we take this offering this morning, I pray, God, that you would use it for continued efforts like this. God, that reach out to our community, that reach out to our neighbors, God, that we would be able to do more for your, for your kingdom and God, for your glory and for your name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. guys very much. Can we give God just another round of applause? He deserves it. Amen. Thank you so much for being here today. As Pastor Andrew, uh, Pastor Andrew mentioned, uh, just your attendance here. It's always an honor to be able to share this experience with this church family, our church family. So thank you so much, church family, for being here today. And to all our guests, I know it's an honor. You have a choice, but you're, you're with our family. And we, uh, we appreciate you. So thank you so much. Uh, we have some friends of ours are here. I'm not going to make them say anything. But we have some friends of ours. And yes, we do have friends. Um, all the way from Humble, Texas that are here. And they surprised us this morning. But with the slaves, would you guys just, can we just, just wave at me? I want to make you stand. They're with us here today. It's awesome. Thank you guys for being here today. And we also have some VIPs, believe it or not. And I told you guys very what, how I believe uh, when it comes to our heroes of the faith and our mission, we have some missionaries here and Brandon and Joanne, thank you. I know you guys are awesome and uh, thank y'all for being here. I'm missionaries to Ethiopia and it's always a privilege to have missionaries with us. So uh, can we show our appreciation to, to the Jordans right now? Thank you guys very much. Thank you guys. We're praying for you guys and we know it's not going to be very soon, which I know Kay didn't want to hear that. Uh, but we've been praying for you guys and thank you so much for being here. So. Um, man, what a week it, it has been. Um, I, the pictures really don't do it any justice as far as the neighborhood block party. What a, what a great event uh, that was. Uh, an incredible night in itself. And uh, some of you already heard or probably know. Um, also celebrated a birthday that day, which is kind of awkward. Um, but that was always fun. And so uh, now I'm a year older. And um, those you guys, you guys are wondering if I'm being lazy. I'm not being lazy when it comes to my beard. For some reason, people are wondering. I don't know why it's a topic conversation, but it is. Um, I am growing a beard out. There is a reason for it uh, besides being no shave ember. Um, I'm also doing it for a reason, which you'll find out at Christmas, but I can't tell you, okay? Uh, but thank you guys very much for your concern. I know some of you guys wonder if you are going to buy me a razor for, for my birthday. I don't need one. Uh, so I had a couple people, had, had, had a couple suggest that. Pastor, you need a razor? You can't afford one? Uh, no, uh, I don't need one, but thank you very much. So uh, 
Appreciate all the thoughts and our prayers and concerns. I really, they're, they're really heart, heartfelt, I'm telling you. Uh, but thank you all much for being here today. Man, I, I'm ready to have fun. How about you guys? Um, as I mentioned before, man, every Sunday for me, and hopefully it is for you, it's, it's Christmas Day. It really is. I, I just, I, it's hard for me to even sleep on Saturday nights. So I really don't most of the time. Um, I can't wait to get here and just be able to celebrate um, Christ. And, and celebrate what he does for all humans, especially when we don't deserve it. Um, that's, I think that's probably the overwhelming part for me. I just, it's, it, it's the reason why I, I, I have the feelings that I do is because I know, I, I don't know where I'd be but not for his love, his grace, and his mercy. I'm thankful for it every day. I'm overwhelmed of that every day. And the, and the fact that we get to come together as a church family and celebrate that. Amen, church? That's awesome for me. I, I hope you feel that every time you come into this place. We try to be purposeful about that through our worship, through the sermon messages, through everything we do. We want to make that an experience to where you experience the love of God more than anything. That's really the bottom line. And hopefully you get to, at, at, in the process of that, we get to touch the throne of God when I worship and just say, God, thank you for loving me first. Amen, church? So um, today we're going to start a new series, and I've got to be honest with you, I, I really didn't want to, I really don't want to do this, and didn't want to do this, um, but I know it's something that needs to be said, especially with the, especially going into the week that we're going into, um, and, and, and again, not trying to be funny or facetious, but believe it or not, some people don't know still that this is a presidential election year. Uh, I think I talked to somebody today going, really? I said, Anyway, I didn't even want to touch that one, but um, yeah, it's um, it's 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 very polarizing. It, it is di it's dividing. It's even within churches in itself, and it doesn't have to be, um, but it is. And a lot of a, a lot of tension is it's 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 there. It's in the air. I mean, guys, just if you engage public at all, you guys know what I'm talking about. Am I, am I just talking here? I mean, you can you can kind of sense the tension, and maybe. Not so much here in deep East Texas, but I'm telling you, that there's tension in our country, a lot of it. And you might not feel it directly here, maybe you do, um, but there's a lot of anxiety in, in our world, not just our country, because the entire world is sitting back and watching to see what America is going to do. If you guys don't know that, you need to think, you, you need to have a biblical world view. Not a biblical East Texas view. We need to have a biblical world view, and the entire world is affected by our decisions. Amen? Folks, I'm not trying to be political here. I'm just saying if you haven't already voted, I, I took care of mine. Praise God, I early voted. I was so thankful to have that privilege. Thankful for the men and women that paid the price so that I can have that privilege. Be I'm very thankful for that. Come on, church. Come on. Very thankful for that privilege. I, I also, someone caught on to it. Um, I won't say their name, but uh, I posted something about when I was in line, I was the only one in line that didn't have camouflage on. Uh, I'm not sure what that meant. Uh, I felt out of place. In fact, I saw, except for the exception of Randy Wells, he was in line back there and he had his brown suit on. Uh, but he and I were the only ones without camo. I'm not sure if they want, but guess what? For pastor appreciation, I was actually, someone gave me a camouflage shirt. So I'm very excited. My first one ever. Okay, I've never owned camouflage in my life. And uh, I just can't wait to go out in the woods now and do something with it. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know. I might wear it someday and you guys won't be able to see me. You'll get that later. Okay. I'm here all week, folks. Get your tickets early. Praise the Lord. <laughs> All right. I told you I'm here to have fun, okay? But we're going to have some Bible fun now, okay? Let's get into God's Word. I'm talking about worry, because believe it or not, guys, I was leading all up to say there's a lot of tension, a lot of anxiety, a lot of worry, and there's already, some of us already have the corner, we own the market. We have the corner market when it comes to worry, okay? Can I say that? I mean, in this, in this room here today, I know there's probably three groups of people represented. There's some of us who... Don't worry about anything. I mean, literally, you're that laid back 
to where you really, nothing affects you. You're not worried about anything. In fact, people are worried about you because you don't worry about anything, okay? Maybe that's you tonight. I'm not trying to be funny. Some of you guys are like, like I don't know. You know, it's kind of like Mountain Man on Duck Dynasty. But anyway, um, some of you are kind of like that, okay? Some of us are on the other direction, okay? I mean, when it comes to worry, you're like a clinical worrier, okay? People write books about you. Okay, I'm serious. Go to go to. We don't have Barnes and Noble. Go to a bookstore, and there's an entire, sh- not just a shelf. There's a section dedicated to people who worry, like you. Okay, praise the Lord. So, just be set free today. And then there's some of us here today who are kind of what I call marginal worries. You 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 you, just, you fall somewhere in the middle. You worry from time to time, and there's times when you don't. And, and so, for those two groups of people. I'm hoping that you'll be able to stay awake for these next three weeks because these messages are for you, okay? For those of you who don't worry about anything, you can learn from the rest of us, okay? Maybe we can learn from you. Uh, but nonetheless, these, this is, there's, there's going to be, um, we're just going to, the first two weeks, we're going to talk about what Jesus has to say about worry. Amen? We're going to go into, into Matthew chapter 6. If some of you guys want to jump there ahead of me, you can. If you have your electronic devices, it's on you version, so you guys can follow along in my notes that way. If you have a bulletin, you can grab a bulletin. How many of you guys have your bulletin going wave those in the air like you do care? And uh, you, guys, oh, listen, you guys can follow along both ways that way if, if you can, okay? But um, we're going to see what Jesus has to say about worry. Now, today I'm going to try to squeeze in as much as I can. According to that clock up there, it's already 1156, okay? Um, Because we don't believe in jumping forward, I guess, here. So um, I'm going by that. I have like four minutes to hurry, okay? No. (laughs) Sorry, guys. You need to be set free. It is, um, it's an hour back, so I still got plenty of time, okay? Um, But we're going to talk about what Jesus is saying. And then the third week, the third and final week, we're going to go into an Old Testament character who has posed the question about worry, and how that changed his perception and his approach on that issue and how that we can learn from that Old Testament character even today. So these next three weeks are going to be fun. But I was going to say is today I'll try to squeeze in as much as I can. Uh, and it might be it might seem a little incomplete to you. It's, it, was, it was by design because I'm going to finish it next week. So just hang tight. But there is some truth that we need to talk about here today. If you guys are with me, say amen. In your, on your devices or in your bulletins, I do have some questions, and you're not going to do a lot of writing today. Um, I, usually I have notes, and I have a lot of things for you guys to write down. More than anything, I want you guys mainly to listen. If you want to jot down a truth here and there, you're more than welcome to, but I want you guys to be able to listen. I went ahead and put some questions in there for you, okay? Now, if you like, you raise your hand to any of these questions by answering, but you're more than welcome to. It might set you free. I don't know. No one here is good. This is a no-judge zone here today, okay? So don't judge people. But the first one is, who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour or a day to your life? How many, how many believe that you can actually add to your life by worrying? Anybody brave enough to raise your hand on that? Okay. Hallelujah, I don't see any hands. Okay, so the next question on that is, who of you, put it this way, who of you, by worrying so much, have taken a year or so off of your life? Okay, I, I see a couple of hands of raving. Some of you don't want to, you don't have to raise your hands. If you do, it'll set you free, church, but you don't have to. But I'm just saying, how many of you, I, I, okay, let me ask this. This is the second part to that question. How many of you have actually taken a year or so off of your spouse's life because you're worried, okay? And uh, yeah, there you go. Now the hands are going up, okay? Some spouses aren't here today because they're out hunting, and I already told them they have to tithe off their deer meat, and so that's always, that's a freedom in itself, so hopefully uh, us as a staff will get some deer soon. Um, number, and, and the third one is this, is there anything more valuable to you than staying alive, okay? In all seriousness, is there anything more valuable to you than staying alive, and if so, will worrying add to or make that that you value better, okay? Just think about that one. And, and here, here's really the question behind it. If worrying, and not really a question, a statement. If, if worrying doesn't add anything to or make, any, and make your item there better, then when, why do we do it? You don't have to answer, but that's just a question. If we all know, and, and it's already been proven, literally clinic. I mean, it, it, not only is it scriptural, but doctors can tell you that worrying can take away from your life. And so if, if we know it's not going to add to it or make those things better, then why do we worry, church? And listen, the reason I say I didn't want to do this series because 
I, I, I'm not exactly a clinical worrier, okay, but I struggle with it from time to time. And uh, yes, I'm one of those weird pastors that are very, very transparent. I don't want to be on your pedestal. I want you to know that I'm a human like anybody else, and I struggle with those things. There's times where I come across and I worry like crazy. And this week, this weekend, for some reason, has been one of those weekends for me, which is a, the devil because he knows I'm about to preach on it, and here I am struggling with it. I mean, it's really crazy. But I, and, and the question still remains even for me. If I know it's not going to benefit, then why do we do it? Amen, church? Come on. Let me hear an amen out there. Then why, why do we? So let me, let me as your pastor, can I, can I speak? Let me go ahead and jump ahead. Can I speak something into all of us here today? Here's what I like to say to you as a pastor. Stop it. Okay, Johnny, come on up. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and close right now. Amen. So you, I'm telling you, that's it, folks. Stop it. Okay, I wish it was that easy, right? Okay, God, there is a message behind that. We'll get to it here in the next, uh, well, next few seconds. Let's go ahead and go to Matthew chapter 6. How many of you guys are excited to get into God's work? Can you say amen? amen? Matthew 6, verses 24 through 30 is our focus here today. And let me, and those of you who are turning there, if you're looking in your device there, your electronic device, uh, as you're getting there, let me just, let me pray, paraphrase for you or give you the big picture of what this passage of scripture is all about. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and give you the answer uh, and give you the end of the story in case some of you guys decide to check out. Uh, I'm going to give you the answer now, okay? Now, how many of you like that? You like the answer first and take the test, okay? So let me give you the big picture of what this passage of scripture is truly saying. He, here's what sums up Matthew 6, 24 through 30. It says, the things that you are most devoted to are the things that will determine what you worry about the most. Okay, let that sink in. The things you are most devoted to are the things that will determine what we worry about the most. That's why today, today's t- uh, message is titled Hopelessly Devoted to You. I'm not going to sing a Living Newton's John song, so I'm not going to do that. Hopelessly. De- no, I'm not going to sing that. Okay. But that's what this pastor, sh- and that's what, and Jesus actually goes to try to answer that question. As far as our devotion and where, and where it sits. But let me, and let me, in fact, while I'm paraphrasing, while I'm giving you the big picture, let me illustrate what Matthew 6, 24, 30 is trying to say. Or at least what Jesus is trying to say and what we can learn from it. And let me just, can I say this right now for those of you? I'm going to give you some illustrations, but I need to tell you right now my little disclaimer. You need to listen to every word I'm about to say because if you hear this next part wrong... Some of you guys are going to completely be upset with me and not understand, and you're going to go back to that table and take your pastor appreciation gift out and not give it to me, okay? But let me just tell you right now, don't be upset. Listen to the whole illustration, okay? Here, let me set you free. Here's, the, here's, what, here's what this passage is saying. For me, I don't worry about your job, okay? I don't worry about your job. Now, if you send me an email or you call me and you give me a prayer request saying, Pastor, I'm struggling here. I don't have a job or I'm struggling here. Do I care about your job? Absolutely. You guys understand the difference there. That's why I needed you guys to hear me today, to truly listen. Do I care about your job? Absolutely. Do I care if you have one or not? Absolutely. I do care about that. I'm very concerned about the fact that if you have a job or not or you're, or you're struggling in your job. Do I sit at my home and worry and pace and stay up all night? No, I don't worry. Here's the reason why. I'm not devoted to your job. Okay, you guys still with me? There's a difference here. I'm getting somewhere to the gaze. I know we've been funny. This is not funny anymore. Now we're getting serious. I don't worry about your job because I'm not devoted to your job. Here's the next part. Don't be offended, parents. I don't worry about your kids' grades at school. I don't. Am I concerned about it? Absolutely. This group of people over here are leaders someday. I weep for our future sometimes. I know. If they don't get good grades, guess what, guys? We're in trouble. So am I concerned about their grades? Absolutely. But I'm not devoted to your kids or their kids' grades. You see the difference there? Am I, am I worried about your retirement plan? I, I am very concerned about it. If you get to go to Hawaii or the Bahamas, take me with you. So I'm very concerned about it. I want to make sure you have a great one. That your nest egg gets as big as it can be so you can take your pastor someday. Let that set you free. Hallelujah. But am I worried about it? No. Why is that? Because I'm not devoted to your retirement plan. It's, 
It's your devotion. You, you, you guys follow me now, guys? It makes you understand that with that illustration, and I'm trying to, to get across today. Here, here's, the, here's the answer why. My worry is tied in to the things that I'm devoted to. Does that make sense now? My, my, my worry is tied in to the things that I'm devoted to. So the question is this right here, guys. Here's the question that I hope will set you free. I didn't put this in your notes, but I wanted you to be able to listen to this. What if, we, what if you shifted your devotion? Okay, listen to that. What if you shifted your devotion? What would happen to your worry? Let that sink in. What if you shifted your devotion? What would happen to your worry? That's what we're after today. And to be honest with you, that's the question Jesus wants to answer and does answer in Matthew chapter 6. You guys ready to say amen? Let's get it right into the word because Edgar's, I need to move on. Here we go. Verse 24. And I love how Jesus starts this off because he starts off, I mean, listen, if it, this is why I love our Savior. This is how we know that we don't serve a Jesus or a God who's a weenie because he goes straight to the jugular. And he goes straight to the subject matter, to the topic that probably hurts us the most. And he goes straight talking about what? Money. Go to verse 24 and you'll see it right there. Jesus says, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one, love the other. Or you will be what? Devoted. There's that word again. Or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and what? Money. Woo! Man, that's an ouch. Ooh, kind of takes the wind out of you. I mean, Jesus goes straight through talking about worry and anxiety and starts, and he had to talk about the M word, money. Now, when you go into Greek and look up that word money, it's actually translated stuff. But nonetheless, money falls into stuff, so that's the proper translation for that. So you go ahead and say you cannot serve God and you can't serve stuff, your money. It doesn't work that way, guys. You guys are with me? Say amen. Verse 25, the, the second part of it. Therefore. Now, have you guys ever been taught as far as when you, see the there, when you see the word therefore, you know why it's there? It's there for a reason. I'm just joking. No. It's therefore because it's, what it's doing is connecting two thoughts. So when you see the word therefore there in verse 25 is because it's connecting the thought of, okay, guys, listen, you can't serve two masters. You can't, love, you can't serve God and serve money. So therefore, and Jesus says, because of that, here's what I have to say. So you get to verse 25, the first part says, Therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Okay, now in the audience that this was written to, obviously is a little bit different, okay? If we were to translate today, obviously we have different needs. Many of us in here probably do not do without food. You can see that I don't. But maybe we don't struggle with some of those things. So let me translate to you what this is really trying to say today. Don't worry about your job or the lack thereof. Don't worry about the kids or having your kids in the right school. Don't worry about your health per se. Don't worry about your retirement. Don't worry about being single the rest of your life and not being married. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about your prodigal son, uh, mom and dad. Don't worry about your prodigal son. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. You guys catch that yet? Don't worry. Now, the human natural reaction to that is saying, so Jesus, so what are you saying? Are you saying that you don't care about those things, that you don't care about our life or, or, or whether we have food on the table, whether we, we, we have enough to be clothed or, or, or God, does that mean you don't care about these things and, and we shouldn't? That's not what God is saying. That's not, he's saying of course, he's concerned about those things. But here, here's, the, here's the thing, guys. Every single one of the things that's on that list, on that, on, on that list there's, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty with every single one of those in there. There's an uncertainty when it comes to job. Can you guys say amen? Some of you have been before and lost your jobs or, been, or, or you, you understand what that means to have that uncertainty about, about jobs. My brother has lost his job again, and, and it's, I don't understand how that happens. He's in a deep, dark place, and I know he might listen to this, and I hope he does because I want to minister to him as well. But he's, there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with that. About our kids, we can do everything we can to pour into our kids, to do, to, to, to do all the right choices and raise them in a biblical way with biblical worldviews. And yet, what happens to our kids sometimes? There's some uncertainty with that. Guys, you follow me on that? Does Jesus want us to care about things? Does he care about those things? Absolutely. And yet he says, you can have all that, but don't worry. 
Don't worry. Then he goes on to verse 25. This, the second part of it says, is, is, is not life more than food? And the body more than clothes? So just for a moment there, what Jesus does in these words is he's pulling us away. I mean, he came with some pretty intense words right there. You can't serve God. You can't serve two masters. You either God or money. And, and don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. And then he pulls us away in verse 25 and he, and he asks us the question. And he says, is, is life not bigger than your health? Is life not bigger than, those, than the kids and your job than being single? Is life not bigger than that? You guys still with me? Verse 26. I love this next part right here. Okay. Again, guys, the scripture paints words, doesn't it? Okay. And in verse 26, this is, I don't know about you guys, but you can almost, I laugh at this because it says right there. What does it say right there, guys? Can you put it on the screen? I want you guys to read this with me. Okay. The first part of that says, look at the birds of the air. So after that intense moment, Jesus comes back and says, don't worry. Don't serve two masters. God, money. Da, 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 da. I mean, some intense conversation. And all of a sudden, Jesus comes back and says, look at the birds in the air. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I try to put myself in that situation. And I got to thinking, really? Ain't nobody got time for that. I mean, to look at the... You'll get that later. <laughs> Jesus goes... Look at the birds in the air. And all about you guys. Here, here's my friend Duke, okay, guys? So Duke is really struggling today because LSU lost, okay? But here, here's another story. Okay, I know. So he knows I love him, okay? Now, Duke's my friend, hard worker. I know a lot of stress that comes with your job, right? This is for, this, here's, let me paint this for you. What if Duke calls me up and says, listen, man, Edgar, I got, man, can you come to Kilgore? I'm just really struggling today. A lot of stress in my job. So Duke calls me up and I show up there at the yard, right? Okay, I show up in Kilgore. I know I'm out of place, but I'm there talking to my friend who's really stressed out. He's struggling. And I come to Duke, and I get out of my car, and I come, and here he is just distraught, stressed out. Just things, just life is just getting him down. And I show up and say, Duke, come here, stand with me, okay? He gets up, and I say, Duke, what's going on, man? Hey, tell you what. Look at the birds in the air. Just, no, 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 really. Just, just look. Look at those birds. Isn't that awesome? Now, he's about to punch me, okay? Because he just called me and says, listen, I'm stressed out, bro, and you're asking me to look at birds in the air? Okay, thank you, bud. I would never do that to you, by the way. But you understand that, I mean, you understand what I'm saying? I mean, Jesus says, look at the birds in the air. You say, I don't have time for that. Jesus, do you not understand? My, my kids are not serving God. I don't know where they're at today. I don't have a job. I don't have money. I don't know where my next paycheck's going to come. I mean, guys, we can rattle off this entire list. And Jesus, is, I, I, I mean, listen, you've got to go with him. He says, look at the birds in the air. It's almost there's theme music with it. Here's the next part. This is what will set you free. Then he goes on to say, they do not sow or reap or store or store away in barns. Okay? You're still going. Okay? You're trying to understand. What is Jesus trying to say? Let me put this in plain language today, okay, for us. What Jesus is saying is, listen, Edgar, listen, Duke. These birds, they don't have they don't have to worry about 401ks. You don't see the birds walking around holding their kids by their hand all day, making them wear helmets so they don't get hurt as they live life. You don't see birds doing that, do you? No, you know what birds do, Edgar? You know what birds do, Duke? What they do is they build these nests way high up in the air, and then you know what they do next? They, they kick their kids out of the nest, and they say, Poo! Good luck! That's what birds do. There's a parenting model, by the way, folks. That's exactly what birds. <laughs> that's what Jesus is saying. Listen, if you don't see, if you don't see a little, a little jab at Jesus at us right there, trying to be funny. If you don't think Jesus is funny, he's funny. Because when you get to verse twenty-six, saying, "Look at the birds," you're stressed out. You're just, blah, blah, blah. and he said, "Look at the birds. They don't hold. I mean, they got birds." You don't see them caring, do you? They say good luck. Some of your parents are like taking notes going, man, this is good stuff, man. I'm telling you. This is great. You know, I mean, I didn't expect to hear about parenting, but this is awesome. This will set me free today. Then he gets the verse. Then he gets this. Hey, listen, this is awesome, okay? Then he gets, yet your heavenly father feeds them. 
Are you not much more valuable than they? You get that? He was trying to be funny. He was trying to lighten the mood. But then he says, listen, look at the birds. I take care of them. How much more do you think I'm going to take care of you? Folks, I'm telling you, this will set you free today. I've read this a million times, yet I still struggle with this. But God, you understand, I'm pastoring a church. You understand, we've got to pay bills. Really? Go outside and look at the birds, and then come back to me and talk to me, okay? <laughs> Believe it or not, I actually did that a lot last year, okay? I didn't sleep half the year, okay? And there's times where I had to go outside and say, okay, I get it, God. I'm a moron. You're God. I'm not. How much more do you care about me? And that's exactly what he's saying. You think God cares more about a bird than you? No. And here's what God's trying to say. God still wants us to practice the, the, the principle of sowing and reaping. He, he still wants us to store up in barns. He, he wants us to have a retirement. He wants us to be smart. He's concerned about all those things. But God, listen, this is what Jesus is saying. When you practice all that and live life and you have a job and you store up, those are good things. But after all that, I've got it. Don't worry. You do what you can do, but let me do what I can do. It's exactly what he's saying there. After all that, what is he saying? Don't worry. Don't worry. Let's read verse 27. Let me finish off with this. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? Even Jesus asked that question. So I didn't make this up, folks. Can any one of you, by worrying, add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow. And the, listen, he was speaking a language to an audience that they truly understood what that meant right there. Do they not labor or spin? Yet I tell you, did not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and, and thrown it, 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 which is tomorrow thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? And here's the ouchie that Jesus throws in. I like adding the little letter O into that because it's just more dramatic. Oh, you have little faith. Because that's exactly what he's saying to us. After all that, Edgar, all the, I mean, I, I take care of everything, the seasons. I mean, I looked out today and I'm starting to see the leaves turn. I, I saw one of my crepe myrtles on the back going, man, that is so beautiful. That I don't know if it's supposed to be turning, but it looks good or not. Maybe it's dying. I don't know, but it's beautiful back there. Driving around, and I'm thinking, God, you, you know how you, you orchestrate everything. How much more valuable am I than a plant, than a tree, than a bird? Guys, are you catching this today? You're saying, well, that's so simple. Is that all you got for us, Pastor Edgar? That's all I got for you. But yet the question still remains, why do we still worry? If it's that simple, church, then why do we still do that? Finger back at me here. I'm right there with you. But why do we still do it? Why? Maybe it comes down to a trust issue. Now we're getting to the meat of it. Okay. Okay. That's why I checked your tomatoes at the door so you don't throw them at me. But that's the truth. Back at me. I had to practice this even yesterday. God's saying, listen, maybe it comes down, Edgar, to a trust issue. Do you trust your father? It's a good question, church. Let that sink in. And the question I turn to all of us here today, then church... The question is, is, do we trust our Father? Because maybe what it comes down to, guys, is worry is a devotion issue. I know in your, in your notes there is actually a question, but it didn't mean, it, I didn't mean it to be a question. It's actually a statement. Worry is a devotion issue. Worry is a faith issue. So I guess now we're getting down to the nitty-gritty, if you will. Okay, then getting down to the, to the core of it is, it comes down to, on the core of who you are, where is your faith? It comes down to a trust. It comes down to a faith issue. That's really what we're trying to say. If Christ is really to kind of hold us, our feet to the fire and get an answer out of us, that would be our answer. Whether you like it or not, folks, that's the answer we give back to God. When we worry and worry and worry and worry, when all else has been taken care of and he's already proven it time and time again, when, what, what we're doing with our actions, maybe not much with our words. Well, I've never said that to God. Of course you've never said it. But guys, with our actions, that's what we're saying is, God, I don't trust you. Hello? 
We don't trust you. And our hang-up is, here's what we're saying. I know God can, I just don't know if he will. Hello? Then, then the next question is, here's what, you, here's what he's saying to us. Have I been unfaithful to you? Let's have this conversation with God this morning. Church, let's get real, because I don't want you to walk away from this place until you're getting something. Here's the conversation that God and us are having right now in this moment. So please open up your ears and hear this last part, because that's what God is saying. Edgar, LFA church family, listen to me. Have I been unfaithful to you? Have I? In the midst of all this change and chaos and uncertainties that are all around you. And here's the issue, guys. Our future has been uncertain since day one. Did you know that? Since the instant you were born, our future has been uncertain. It's just that the older we get, we become more aware of those uncertainties in life, and therefore we worry more. Think about it. And the issues, I mean, the, the uncertainties were there back when I was a teenager. I just didn't have to worry about it because I wasn't aware about them. But now that I'm 42, I just turned 42. Now that I'm 42, I become more aware of those uncertainties up there. And so because I'm more aware of the uncertainties that are out there, I decide to worry about those things. And God's saying, in the midst of all that, have I changed at all? Have I been unfaithful to you, Edgar, at all? Then if not, then the question still remains, then why do you worry? If you know I haven't been unfaithful, you know I am true to you, and I am an unchanging God. Hallelujah. Amen, church? I'm an unchanging God. If that's the case, then why do you worry? That's what he's asking us. And he comes back with, oh, you have little faith. Guys, that hurts, doesn't it, church? So in, in, in closing today, if, as we leave this place, and I'm telling you, you might leave a little bit today, a little bit incomplete. There's still a message for us here today. We're going to finish this next week. And next week, we're going to be talking about Jesus is going to bring up the parallel between all that, which is going to set you free. It's going to be awesome. But here's the things that I want you to walk away with today. Just a few things. The first one is this. Worry is a waste of time. And if you can write in your notes there, time equals life. So the issue there today, church, is quit throwing away your life. That's exactly what worry is. If worry equals time and time equals life, then guys, we need, to, we need to practice that equation. Let's quit throwing away our life every time we worry. Church, come on, are you with me now? I know this, 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 and this is very convicting stuff. Trust me, this is why I did not want to preach this message because I have to deal with this. If I'm going to preach it, I've got to practice this. And I struggle with this. But I understand what God's trying to say today. I mean, listen, if I'm, an, and I, if I'm a faithful God, which he has proven to me, especially, I know all of us here today, if I was to pass a microphone, a microphone to every single one of you, I know all of us can probably list off a list a mile long of what God and how God's been faithful to us. I know he has. Amen, church? We are a very blessed nation, a very blessed people, and yet here I am at the end of the day going, God, I, can't, I guess at the end of the day I really don't trust you. I say I do with my words, but my action doesn't reflect that. So, oh, a little faith, please forgive me, God, because I need to learn to trust you because you're not changing. You've never moved. You've been proven the same yesterday, today, and you're going to be forever. You're going to be the same. So I have to cling on to that promise today that you're an unchanging God, that you are a loving God, and you have my best interest in mind, in my health, in my finances, in my family, in the things that I can't control when it comes down to it. Here's the principle, guys, is that we need to do what we can do and trust him with what he can do. So worry is a waste of time. That's the other one. Number two is we are to do what we can do and trust God with what he can do. That's the bottom line. And third on that one is this. Johnny, would you guys come on up? If the emotion of worry, here's the, here's the ticket. If the emotion of worry is associated with the devotion of life, then what are you most devoted to? That's the question today. Can I ask you that question? If our emotions are connected to what we're devoted to, then the question still remains for all of us today is, what are you devoted to? It's not very often I give you guys some homework, but I'm giving you some homework this week, church. 
Figure that out and write it in your notes, write it in your journal, write it in somewhere that you're going to learn from this and start putting into practice, because that's the issue. Once we figure out what we're devoted to the most, because that's what we're going to be worried about the most, if we shift our devotion, hello, to God himself, then where's our worry going to go? God says, I've got it. I've got it. Church, will you stand with me today? I hope you know and understand, and I I don't gain anything from saying this. I hope you know how much we love you guys. I I hope you do. I mean, I can honestly and and with all sincerity say that I love you guys. I want to see it succeed. I'm concerned for you. Now, I understand I don't worry every day because I got my own things to worry about. And God's saying, no, you don't. (laughs) No, you don't. No, you don't. Look at the birds in the air. Some of you guys are going to do that today. I challenge you. I hope you do. I hope you look silly doing it. Because then it'll open up a door and people are going to ask you, what are you doing? I'm looking at the birds. Because <laughs> I, got, I got so much stress right now. I got so much worry right now. I'm going to go outside and look at the birds. Because I know if God takes care of that little sucker who kicks his kids out of the nest... How much more is he going to worry? How much more is he going to be concerned about me? Church, I know this is funny, but this will set you free today. I promise you. Maybe for some of us, that's what it's going to take is to go outside and practice scripture. Go outside and look at the birds in the air. I promise you it will set you free. I did that last night. I did that yesterday. Even at night, I can hear them. I'm going, God, you are so awesome. Please forgive. Please forgive me, God. Forgive me. I'm t- I, I, forgive me, God. I mean, I went through at least 20 minutes of saying, God, I'm so sorry. You've been so faithful to me. You've been an unchanging God. You've been there from the very beginning. You're going to be there even after I'm gone. In eternity, you're going to be there. You're already there waiting on me. So, God, how dare I not trust you? How dare I go to the end of the day going, I really don't understand, God, why these things are happening. I don't understand why my brother again has lost his job and in two weeks going to be out of the house. God, I don't understand these things. Why do these things keep happening? God says, go outside and look at the birds, brother. Because I promise you, I love your brother. I love your family. I love those things you are concerned about and worried about. But at the end of the day, you need to be concerned through me. Come to me. I've got this all in my hands. That's where it's at, church. Let me end it with the elephant in the room. This Tuesday, our country is literally going to change. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not even going to try to predict what's going to happen. I am in no way endorsing a candidate. I I, I voted the Bible. I will tell you that. I voted the Bible. Not ashamed of it. I'm very proud to vote the Bible. So you can kind of interject where I went with that. But I don't know what's going to happen. I can't control that. Church, are you with me? I can't control that. Coming this week, I'm telling you, it's going to be, you might not, you might not understand it and try to wrap your mind around it. I'm telling you, it's going to be a life altering, life changing week for America on both sides of it. We have to be prepared for that in the day going, God, I trust you. At the end of the day, you're still on the throne. You still have my best interest in mind. You still love your church. At the end of the day, regardless of who sits in the White House, you're still on the throne. And there's still lost and dying people out there that are driving by our church that we need to reach. To be honest with you guys, that's where my concern is at. My devotion is, God, what can I do to be a light? What can I do to be your hand extended? What can I do to reach this world? We got a family sitting over here saying, Lord, send me to Ethiopia. Who does that, right, Brent? Who does that? The people who are saying yes. Send me to Ethiopia where I know lost and dying Ethiopians are, are, are needing to hear the word. That's who does that. 
Send me to Longview. Send me to Spring Hill. Send me to the schools. Send me where the lost is. That is where the devotion needs to be, folks. Because at the end of the day, we can't control life. God has it in his hands. Can I speak in that to you today? Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Don't worry. Church, I love you. And I want to pray for you right now. Can we, can we just right now just shut everything else out? I want you to receive this today. Maybe you're new to this experience. Maybe the stress is you don't have a God in your life. I can understand the stress that comes with that because you don't understand or you might not know where you're going to spend eternity at. That's something to worry about. Amen, church? If you don't know where you're going to spend eternity, let me ask that question first. Maybe you're here today and you're saying, man, I, man, preacher, that's pretty good stuff, but I'm stressed out still. I don't even know where I, this Jesus is God. Does he really love me that much? The answer is yes, he does. He loves you that much that he sent his son to die for you. So here's the first question. If you're here today and you've never said yes to a life-giving God, this can be your moment. This can be your day. In fact, you can. I pray with you with your head bowed and eyes closed. You're saying, God, I just need God today. Maybe you need him for the first time. Maybe you need to come back to a God that loves you. If that's you, can you raise your hand? Anybody in this building today? Hands. There's a hand over here. Anybody else? Come on, guys. Help me out. There's, anybody, that's awesome. Any other hands, guys? Thank you so much for your honesty. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hand down here. Hand over here. Thank you. Three, four. This is awesome. Church, we ought to be celebrating this. This is awesome. It's incredible. God is here to give you life. Anybody else? Praise the Lord. Here's the next part of it, church. You're saying, and I'll raise both my hands and, well, one of my feet. You're saying, I'm here today. You know what, Pastor Edgar? I struggle with worry. I really do. Maybe you're, you're a clinical worrier and people write books about you. Or maybe you're just kind of, you know what, I, I do, I tend to worry. I really do. I tend to stress out. I struggle with that. And I need prayer today. Would you pray for me? In fact, would you be bold to raise your hands? Come on, church. I got my hands up. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you so much. Keep your hands up, guys, and let's pray. Let's keep your hands up and let's, let's cry out to God who truly loves us today. God in heaven, thank you. God, I love you. God, I praise you. God, I adore you. God, I thank you, Lord God, for your life-giving blood, Lord God. Thank you that you love us that much, Lord. That you even ask us to go outside and look at the birds. Father, who does that? But in that, in that revelation, Lord God, we realize that how much more do you love me, Lord? And your answer is always, I love you that much more. Just realize that today. So, so, Father, I pray right now for every hand that went up or maybe didn't get to go up. Lord, I pray that all of us, Lord, who struggle with worry, who struggle with doubt, who struggle with anxiety, that at the end of the day we say, God, but we love you and you're still on the throne and you love us. And, God, that's who I trust. That's where I'm going to shift my devotion to is to you, God. So I pray for every single person in this place today that as we leave this place, God, we leave this place encouraged, God, to reach our world, encouraged knowing that we're going to shift our devotion to you, God. That's where it's at. God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your love. God, thank you for who you are in my life. I pray for those hands that went up, Lord God, that need to receive you as their Savior. I pray that right there where they're at, Lord God, they say a simple prayer is, God, I need you. Come into my life. It's that simple. Come into my life. I need you. I need you. God, thank you for today. We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Can we give God a round of applause? Come on, God. He deserves it. Here's your homework. When you go home this week, can you guys read? And I want you to read this every day if you can. Read Matthew 6, verses 24, and go all the way through 34. So Matthew 6, 24 through 34, read that. Read that. Read that. And just and read as many times as you can. Please. Because this will, this will set you free. Hold on one second.
Pastor, Pastor, I want to let you know on behalf of this congregation and myself, the number of years that I have pastored and preached on this subject, I don't believe I've ever heard the expression so dynamic and pointing into the matter of worry and devotion as you did this morning. And you've been transparent. And that right, we love you. Thank you. Well, church, I love you. Do your homework. Write down where your devotion is, and let's shift it this week. Amen, church? Come on, I, I, I'll practice that with you. And read, and read Matthew 6, 24 through 34. And then when we come back next week, you'll be ready to receive the other part of where we're going to go with this. Amen. Go in your small groups. Your small groups are going to, you're going to talk about this in your small groups. So get ready. Join your small groups tonight, guys. Get all over the town. Get in your small groups. And let's have a great week. Amen. Love you guys.